Begrüßt daher aus Oxford unseren Paläontologen, Mr. Dr. David Legg. I'm talking about climbing up the arthropod family tree, which I'm sure means nothing. In fact, my original title was Arthropod Paleobiology and Phylogeny. And the organizers said there's at least four words in there we don't understand. <laughs> They're not as clever as you are. So, firstly, the arthropods. Uh, the arthropods include butterflies, spiders, scorpions, beetles. <laughs> basically, the creepy, crawly things that you don't want to associate with. And uh, also, the trilobites. You may have seen these fossils. My, my nan calls them stoned wood lice. So... As I said, I'm a, I'm a paleobiologist, I'm a paleontologist, but normally when I tell people I'm a paleontologist, they say, oh, like Ross from Friends. <laughs> and they go, you must work on dinosaurs then. And then they ask me, will Jurassic Park ever happen? <laughs> and a bit of me dies inside. <laughs> There are some people in the media I like, paleontologists, like Richard Forty. I don't know if you get him out here, he's on the BBC. Um, but he still gives this false impression of paleontology. For one, we don't all get girls like Jennifer Aniston. I wish, you know, but maybe Richard does. He's a, he's a very attractive guy. And also, we don't spend our time in the desert digging up things with art supplies. So this, this is the more typical view of paleontology, but it's not the one I know. Instead, I end up on a rainy hill in the Czech Republic, working with three of the ugliest guys I know. <laughs> I apologize if Javier Ortega Hernandez ever sees this, but you've got to know. And we use tools that are more likely to be found in a Miley Cyrus video being licked. <laughs> well, we were there for two weeks and we managed to resist the urge to lick our tools. And uh, instead we dug this one and a half meter trench. Now again, three, three weeks to dig this trench in the rain because I, being English, I bring the weather with me. And we were looking at the, this thing, Furca bohemica, which I know looks like nothing, but <sighs> I thought it looked a bit like a cowboy. <laughs> Or did you ever see the news when George Bush was president and he walked a bit like that? <laughs> so this thing is a, a lace crab. It belongs to this group that lived about 500 to 300 million years ago. And that's around the time that our groups that we're interested in originated. Unfortunately, after three weeks digging that very small trench in the hardest rock and trying not to lick our tools. We didn't find anything. Well, I say we didn't find anything. We found this guy, which apparently releases a sticky white substance. Now, hang on, hang on, wait, wait. We all do that from time to time, I know. Which causes you to feel a bit sick. Um, so we didn't lick that either. <laughs> Although I did ask my field companion, Javier, if he'd felt sick on the trip, and he said, yeah, but I was staying with you, so... Uh, in that terrible orange coat. So I wasn't going to be discouraged. I thought, I know, I know where I can find these things. I'll go to Canada. And rather than go to these beautiful lakes and mountains, I ended up in the most hideous building in creation. <laughs> and when I got there, the curator said, no, I don't want you to look at all my precious things. You can look at this which I know looks a bit like a smudge on a rock, but paleontologists can see anything good in anything, which is great if you're dating one of them. <laughs> um, and we also find it associated with these claws. Now, when you put this all together and you've got a bit of an artistic mind, you come up with something that looks like this. And uh, I decided I would call it Kutanakila Depai, uh, which means Depp's scissor hands from Kutane, because I think you'll see the resemblance. Maybe? No? Okay, well, again, um, so what's this leading to? What do I then do? I've, I've had unsuccessful field work. I pff, can't stay away from the tools. So I end up, oh, sorry, going back to the arthropods, right? What I do with this information is I look at how these things evolved because there's over a million of them on Earth, a million different species. Imagine that, a million species. Every day you come into contact with them. In fact, uh, we find them. Little spiders on the slopes of Mount Everest. I know, gorgeous, isn't it? And uh, mites at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. And this is the most disgusting fact I know about arthropods. Every single person in this room, even Jan, checking the time, has mites living on him right now. Now, I'm glad no one's got OCD or you go, I need a shower! <laughs> so <sighs> that happened in my last audience. So what do I do with this information? Well, 
this is the exciting part, as, as you can see. I, I, I reduce it into zeros and ones. And what I'm trying to do with this is produce uh, trees. So you may have seen Darwin's idea of the tree of life. You know, we all evolved from this point, this root, and eventually we split off from monkeys and different things, and we are the tips of these branches. Now, in my lab group, we call these hand job trees because, well, they're produced by hand and produced by total wankers. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, all paleontologists are wankers. I get it, okay, fine. So, this is where this code comes in. What we do is we, we want to be a bit more mathematical because, as you've just seen before, maths are really cool. So, so we use these maths, we use this code to produce these trees. And how does it work? Well, in England, we have this game, Guess Who? I don't know if you know the game. I was told you might not know it, but every English person has one stashed under the bed next to the dirty magazines. So we're going to play a quick game. So we have our arthropods, our different arthropods, and we start asking ourselves questions like, does it have mandibles? Oh, yes, it does. So we get rid of those. Um, does it have five pairs of legs? Yes, it does. And the more and more exclusive we get, the more likely these things are to be closely related. And that's how our code works. Every question, a yes or no, is represented by zero or one. So back to the game. Uh, we have these three charming people. And we might say that Alex and Charlie are closely related to each other because they both have mustaches. And obviously, that's how it works. That's how genetics works. Um, but then we get someone like these two. Now, all of them have blonde hair. And Joe and Claire also have glasses. But we actually think Charles and Joe are more closely related to each other because, again, that's how genetics works. Um, and this causes problems when we produce these trees because if we think things have a different origin, then we're going to get the wrong result. So imagine down in this corner, we have brown hair. Up in this corner, we have black hair. And this is our blonde hair over here. Well, when we produce this data, the branches grow together. So it looks like, actually, there's a point here where things evolved, but actually, they're just superimposed. And we call this long branch attraction. So here's how the fossils come in. This is an actual data set we took. I know, very basic, but it got into nature, so. Fair play. And uh, this is what people thought was the right answer based on DNA. But DNA is a redundant code, so it can change all the time. What I found was when you include fossils, they change our idea of how things are related. They give us a better idea of evolution because evolution is historic, and therefore they give us a historic record of how things evolved. So the moral of the story, if you're going to go away, if you're going to tell your grandkids about this in the future, is that fossils break up long branches because they are heartless bastards. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs>